Welcome to episode 137 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my co-host, Warren Sklar, is here. How are you doing, Warren? Another day, another snowstorm here in uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Another seven inches and stayed home from work and did nothing. So there you go. And speaking of snow, he's out in the Northeast uh, with you. Uh, welcome back to the show, Mr. Chuck Joyner from Mac Voices. How are you doing, Chuck? I'm doing great, David. Uh, fellow Pennsylvanian to Warren, and we only got about five and a half inches. So You're in a better part of the state. Better, but, <laughs> but as we speak, it's glazing right now. Everything is yeah. getting covered in a sheet of ice, so it's it's going to get ugly. And we, we added another two inches to our 18 inches. It's been uh, for the last uh, week or two weeks. It's just crazy weather. You guys got the cold. Yeah. We didn't get and as cold. cold as you guys got here. Yeah, yeah we're, we're like... We're we're still hovering around that. Like if you walk five miles one way, you're in the rain line. If you walk five miles the other way, you're in the the, the mix or snow line. So yeah, it's been like that. It's been like that all winter, actually. Crazy For stuff. Us. So, um, so we got some good stuff to talk about this week. Uh, got some new stories. Uh, pretty active uh, news this week for Apple and the beta. Of course, has come out, and we always talk about that each week with Warren. Um, and uh, actually got a listener question. I'm going to answer uh, today. Uh, from a, from a listener and uh, got a couple tips. So I think we got a, a pretty good show for you today. Um, let's go ahead and just get started uh, with the news of the day. And uh, keeping my trend here, stick with Mac rumors. They always give us some great news. Um, the, app, the iPhone 12 Pro Max named the most popular 5G smartphone in the United States. Uh, the uh, Apple, uh, t- uh, the iPhone 12 Pro Max was held the title of the most popular 5G smartphone in the 49 of 50 states. I like to know what state the other state is. It doesn't listed here in in january of 2021 according to pc mag and uh citing data from speedtest.net so they they did some they did some research here you could kind of see how how many 5g uh, phones out there interestingly enough not uh, number two was iphone 12 pro and number three was iphone 12 and number four was iphone 12 mini so uh interesting to see what the where where this goes of course this is not official apple information so uh, chuck what do you think of this you know, I, I mean, okay, so we're all Apple people, right? Right. So I want to say that this shouldn't surprise anybody, but it really shouldn't surprise anybody. It should. And and I think I think it kind of refutes the idea that uh, all the all the naysayers that talk about the high price and everything. I, I'd love to tell you that it's the size that did it. I'd love to tell you that it's the the best camera of the iPhone 12 line that did it. Right. But at the end of the day, it's I think it's it's both of those plus the the Apple architecture, the focus on privacy, the the breadth and depth of apps available. I mean, it just it hits on all on all cylinders. And so, you know, it's it's just not a surprise. The one it, it, if you'd have told me that the regular iPhone Pro excuse me, iPhone Pro 12 had been the most popular, I would have said, okay, it was price sensitive. But Mm. I don't think this, I think this points to the fact that iPhones are not price sensitive. People want them and they will pay for them. Yep. And all three of us have the 12 Pro Max. Uh, Warren, of course, like like you and I, uh, we like the large size phones and we've been with this size phone for quite a while. What do you think of this? Yeah, it's a, it's a quality phone. Uh, I know that, um, We've owned pretty much all of them since, you know, whatever. And they don't get worse every year. That's no. why we keep coming back. Um, yeah. And, you know, um, you know, Android had 5G phones before um, Apple did, slightly. But if you remember, it wasn't a thing. It's like, you know, there was like one or two out there and they weren't, you know, yeah, you know, it wasn't 5G wasn't pushed as much until iPhone came out with the 5G and then it was all over the place. Um and, um, you know, Android, I'm sure, has a lot of good selling phones, but they don't have they don't have one model. They have different models, different companies are making them. So, you know, it's hard to compete with one. You know, it's hard to compete with a product from Apple, one particular product from Apple when you have so many others yeah. in, the, in the water. But, um, you know, it's, it's a great phone. I'm excited to see what the 13 does. Yeah. yeah. What else can they do? Um, so the rumors, you know, the rumors coming out with the the. 120 hertz refresh rate, the promotion, things like that. So maybe that will come out, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll definitely see. 
Uh, next story, uh, Apple pays $163.34 million in licensing, licensing fees to songwriters and publishers. Uh, the, mechanic, the mechanical licensing collectives that announced via the Variety magazine uh, that Apple and other digital uh, service providers have paid a total of four, over $424 million in historical unmatched royalty fees. Of that, Apple did 163 which was the highest paid out. Spotify was right behind them, and then uh, Amazon and Google and other streaming services were up, you know, brought up the, the rear here. Um, and uh, 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 these folks uh, are, are collecting the fund as a nonprofit organization that was created uh, in 2019. And uh, starting in January 2021, they began providing, uh, providing blanket licenses to eligible streaming and download services in the United States to collect the royalties under those licenses and paying out to all these songwriters, music publishers, and others. Make sure they're getting the proper funds. Um, Warren, what do you think of this? Yeah, at first I didn't know if this was a good article or a bad article against Apple, but uh, you know, reading it, no. it's, it's just a good thing. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if they were like you know, like they had to or, or whatever. But um, what I think is, uh, you know, a lot of uh, I hear a lot of Apple lovers claim that Apple does pay good royalties to the, uh, the artists, while other providers don't, and that's one reason why you should support Apple Music is because they pay better. This is nice to see some uh, yeah. some of that in writing rather than just uh, people spewing that information. So, um, you know, it's good. You know, with all the uh, with all the artists that were complaining when we went to streaming, hopefully this will help. In that case, absolutely, Chuck. What do you think? Uh, you, you being the, the the music lover you are, <laughs> go Brittany. Go Brittany. <laughs> I, I'm. <laughs> Yeah, you brought it up. Yeah, that, I, that, I did not bring it up. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like Warren in this one. I mean, I think it looks good for Apple. Um, Spotify was second, and you know, after that, it sort of trails off quite a bit. Right. I just, I, I do have concerns over the the future of the music industry if the artists aren't being compensated properly. Yeah. And ironically, with with the pan, global pandemic, I mean, there was that shift away from selling albums and selling records because you weren't going to get paid that way. The streaming services weren't paying what a lot of people thought they should be. And so the artists were out there touring and, you know, that's where they were making their money. Now they can't tour. So, you know, things are, are problematic for the recording industry right now. And I, I don't know quite how to feel about this. I don't want to see Apple be, be extorted to pay more than somebody else, mm -hmm. because I don't think that's right. Um, and I don't know, you know, where the there, there are too many statistics that we don't have to make an intelligent guess or, or do intelligent commentary about whether this is fair or right for the music industry. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to see if I if, if an artist gets a dollar from Apple, excuse me, if Apple pays a dollar, how much of that goes to the artist versus how much goes to the record company versus, you know, this, that, the other. So a lot of questions here, but at, at the very least, it shows that people are using uh, Apple Music and the streaming services, and at least the artists are, somebody is getting paid something. Yes, that's the most important thing for sure. They want to make sure they're getting paid. So um, next story, uh, Apple says some iPhone 12 hardware issues will no longer require replacing the entire unit. I thought that was the logical thing Apple had been doing, but Apple today informed authorized uh, service providers that it will be introducing a new same unit repair method for the iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12 models exhibiting certain issues that would typically require a whole unit replacement. There was an internal memo uh, that the Mac rumors that was able to obtain saying the technicians will be able to offer the same, same unit repairs starting uh, in February at the end of this February and uh, for the iPhone 12 mini and 12 models and uh, that are unable to, be powered on or experiencing issues with the logic board face id system or the enclosure of the device such as a cracked rear glass which is always uh, was always a pain um so as the service providers and i'm likely i'm sure genius bars will have a new phone iphone rear system part available to that uh, to them to consist of the rear enclosure of the iphone as well as components except for the display and rear camera and i can go on and on here but uh this is i guess a good thing because you know i I tend to not want to have to switch switch phones when uh, you got to restore it and and have fun with all that stuff. Uh, Chuck, what do you think of this? I I think this may point to some big changes 
at Apple from yeah. from the internal design aspect of it that you know that somehow Apple is suddenly able to make these repair options an option and I think that points to a, some kind of an internal redesign and maybe maybe a little bit different focus because you I mean your computer giving up your computer is bad enough giving up your phone is really really difficult mm. And Apple, to their credit, I think have recognized this with the with the unit replacement thing, where I can take it in, say this is not working. They hand me a phone. Yes, it's a hassle to go through the resync, but at least I've got my phone back in my hand. In you know, hopefully a couple hours. Um, I don't know. There, again, there are a lot of details we need here about exactly what what kind of time frame these replacements and these repairs will take. Right. But yeah, I saw this as a, as a very positive thing. Yeah, me too. What do you think, Warren? Uh, well, you know, uh, with, with Chuck saying that, you know, it was, it's, it's to be seen how fast this is going to happen. Cause I'm actually a little bummed because probably about, I mean, <laughs> I was thinking about maybe two or three times I went into an Apple store with a, under when it's under Apple Care with an issue and walked out with a brand new shiny phone, which made me really happy, uh, actually, because you know it's newer. Um, you know, the uh, any issues with it, blemishes, or you know, gone, whatever. I take pretty good care of it, but still, yeah. um, in fact, once they gave me a phone, a brand new phone coming out. I walked out and Face ID didn't work at all. It was a brand new you know, replacement. Walked right back and they handed me a, <laughs> another one right away. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you could walk in and these authorized repair people don't say come back in a week because we'll fix the phone, then it's a bad thing. If they, you know, if they say we can fix it right away, then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I seem to remember many, many times I've, I've brought my iPhone in and over the years and at the beginning, they were they were replacing them pretty much regularly when there was a problem. But then they were starting to try to repair them more. I mean, obviously, screens be were they made them somewhat easier to replace. Uh, but the rear the rear glass on a lot of the you know newer models that was more of a challenge. But it's good to see that the, they're making it a little easier you know, for everybody. I never broke a back. Yeah, I, oh, I I've did. Never, <laughs> did you? Yeah, I've never cracked. I, I don't think I've ever cracked a screen front or back. To be honest with you, not, in fact, I, but, um, I can remember it vividly. It was a it was a four S, and I had just gotten it, and I was gonna getting out of my car, going to do a class at my Apple user group, and it fell out of my hand and crashed to the ground. And I needed the right. phone for for a demo, so I was like, oh, that's not good. and I remember my wife was nice enough to uh, run it over to the to the Apple store, and they were and said, no problem because I had just bought uh -huh. it and then they brought it back and I had it all ready to go. So that the, uh, I have many of those, I'm sure many of us have those types of stories with Apple and being able to get. Uh, and so, so Apple care was born for you at that day. It was. That, that's and that's why I always get it on most, the day you were sold. <laughs> yeah. on most devices. <laughs> exactly. So uh, next story, uh, Apple released a watch OS uh, 7.3.1 with a fix for Apple watch series five and the SE charging issue. Uh, this was a minor update to the watch OS 7 operating system that was released back in September. That comes a couple weeks after 7.3. It came out. Uh, and then the update, of, as I said, is only for the Series 5 watch and the, and the SE model. Um, and what, what this is supposed to be fixing is uh, uh, an issue preventing some Apple Watch Series 5 and this SE models from charging after entering power reserve mode. Um, and Warren, you, you have a, a direct uh, experience with this because I seem to recall you bought the Series 6 after keep it, holding on to your own Series 5 and um and then well no i didn't have that issue though oh you didn't that, okay that phone. i had no i have a, i had a series five that i gave to my son and got the six because the beta that i put on it that unlocked my phone with my watch okay. uh and the mask stopped working and i'm like this is a good time to to try you know ruining another watch so i got <laughs> Uh, the, the, I got the six uh, and and knock with the unlock with the watching mask is working well and my son's happy with the five. I just got an email as as we were talking from uh, Apple Trading Program saying that my hundred sixty dollars for my son's trading, which was a four, is being applied to the purchase. So gotta love all it. good. Gotta love it. Yeah. Um, Chuck, any thoughts on this? No, just it's it's nice to see that Apple is you know taking care of folks that have older older watches, and and the yeah. five is not that old. No. So, um, but you know it it 
it's it's just it's it's Apple. I mean, yep. you know, the, they're going to try to treat you right. Everything has to become obsolete at some point. But right now, I, I I'm not even sure have they actually if officially obsoleted any of the Apple Watches? Well, the Series Zero the and the, probably even the Series One. Uh, then maybe the two, three is still around. So I think those the yeah, first three they, models they support. I think they support everything. They just don't do the software updates. Right? Yeah, the zero and the one right. I think don't are we're end of end of road. I think they're still on like Watch OS six or something like that. Yeah, but, but how many years has that been? Oh, you know, long so, time. Yeah, and in technology you terms, you would have to really hate life if you still had a series. Zero yeah, in your rest. I remember having it, and I remember selling it right away. <laughs> I, 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 the thing was nice, but it was so slow. It was slow. Well, yeah, compared to today's models, yeah, no question. And then uh, uh, even at the time, yeah. It was, <laughs> go ahead. And then there was a, I had a companion article in here that Apple is also going to replace uh, the watch if if that fix does not correct the issue with um, uh, the battery. Uh, the uh the battery uh issue uh so they they will uh go ahead and uh, do free repairs so if you don't have well, of course the SE I would hope most people have warranty but the five you may not they'll cover the repairs so uh added added bonus there um and then uh next article Apple is now offering discounts on the fitness subscription apps uh, uh subscription apps for Apple Card users. Apple today is offering a special app discount and perks to the Apple Card holders, a feature that appears to be new to the service. So, so, uh, there are several fitness-focused apps that are available at discount prices or extended free trials uh, for Apple Card users. Um, they're going to extend 60-day free trial for a couple apps here, uh, for, uh, a number of uh, different uh, uh uh, exercise apps and uh, seems like the I think just more so what caught my eye with this article is just more so you're starting to see more and more things uh, with the Apple Card uh, giving you you know discounts and 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 such uh, and installment payments uh, they have just obviously it's just uh, had have great installment payment plans especially for the Apple Watch I I'm paying something like twenty dollars a month for my Apple Watch that I the uh, Series Six and don't even feel it or think of it and it's in industry for. 24 months so and you can pay it off whenever you want so uh chuck i mean you have apple card uh i, I have you been utilizing a lot of what it offers uh you know some i mean not all of it applies to me or applies to anything i'm interested right. in but i think this makes this makes perfect sense in so many ways it's it's a benefit for apple card holders yeah. and so it makes it exclusive sort of you know i mean there i don't think there are huge barriers to entry to getting an apple card mm -hmm. Except that you, you know, like any card, you got to apply for it. Um, but the more they do this, the more they pull people into that eco, that particular ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, it rewards people within their ecosystem already because obviously the apps are going to run on Apple devices, and you have to have the Apple Card to do it. So it's sort of a double benefit, and it's just more people being pulled into <laughs> into the Apple world. And I think that's, I mean, we all think that's a good thing, and I. I think anybody that is a thinking person should realize that's a good thing. Yeah, I've been paying a lot of my bills and and, and utilizing Apple Pay with it, so you get that two percent cash back on on the Apple card uh, you, on your cash card and uh, three percent on on Apple purchases and other perks they provide. So it's not not a bad deal, and you no, know, it's been a good card for me. Uh, Warren, I know you have one, but you don't use it too often. But what do you think of this? I use it here. I have got to uh, just use it for the watch I got. Yeah. Um, no, all this makes me uh, feel pretty guilty and bad about myself. Uh, <laughs> <Apple's> right. really, <laughs> I mean, seriously, the Apple's doing everything. Uh, you know, between the watch I got, I probably got some free. I qualify for a free Fitness Plus, even though I got the bundle, and I probably bought something anyways. And I, I have the free. I have Fitness Plus for sure, and I, I have the Apple Card. The now bundle. I can get these the apps for it, um, so I could get the apps for free. And I'm not taking advantage of uh, any of it. And I really should be. So um, there, you know, Tim Cook is, uh, you know, standing behind me with his arms crossed, with a look on his face, saying, "You know, get on this and uh, do something. Walk, run, walk, walk with Dolly Parton. I mean, yeah. how can I turn that on? You know, <laughs> he, he's trying. <laughs> Apple's trying to get me yeah. to do something, and then you know, it's not working. So I'll get on that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, next story I had here, Apple launches a For All Mankind companion podcast. Apple today announced mm -hmm. an up upcoming launch of For All Mankind, the official podcast, a podcast that discusses the popular Apple TV Plus series. Uh, as the second season will resume, uh, actually, uh, it's going to resume tomorrow as we record this. Um, 
It'll be uh, hosted by uh, Chris Marshall, who plays Commander Daniel Poole, and the podcast will feature space experts, former astronauts, and for all mankind, uh, cast creators. So the reason I brought this up is more so is, uh, you know, of course, Apple TV Plus content has become more and more popular. They had a great movie we talked about a couple weeks ago, Palmer, with uh, Justin Timberlake. I thought it was a really great movie and a lot of other great content. Uh, but interesting to see that that apple is now looking into dabbling into original podcast content i know there had been rumors about this so this kind of really starts off uh are they going to really get into the podcasting uh uh, content as well as uh, whatever anything else they're in Uh, chuck what do you think of that Uh, it's it's cross promotion for the show that too um the big the big question for me with this uh, is and, and I've, I've a personal bias here. I've kind of burned out on podcasts about shows that are currently running um, because it seems like, OK, the, the, the majority of those shows is this is what happened and this is what we think is going to happen next. And we bring in the star of the show and what do you, what's going to happen next? And the star of the show says, well, I can't tell you. And it's the same formula over and over. Yeah. Now, the one thing that is written up in this article that does say that they're going to have some never before heard things about how astronauts accomplish what they accomplish. And this would be the perfect thing yeah. uh, to, you know, to promote some of that. And especially today as the, as the, uh, the, the Rover landed on Mars today successfully. Yeah. Um, so space is all on our minds and, you know, I, I don't know any too many geeks that aren't space geeks as well. Yeah. We have a few so friends. <laughs> I, I, yeah, and and I, I so I guess my take on it is I this will be a wait and see for me. I'm not excited about it, just talking about the show because I can watch the show, but what they deliver along with it is where it, it might hook me, and maybe it'll hook some others. Yeah, and that's why I thought this this is kind of an entry point for Apple to to start thinking of original content for podcasters and podcasting. So, you know, they land some you know big uh, big things. Um, Obviously, a big dis- disruption with uh, Rush Limbaugh passing away in the conservative of radio market. Uh, so there's obviously going to be getting some more general interest of of, of that uh, in radio in itself. But that podcasting has really been kind of an added part of that whole world. So it'd be interesting to see uh, where it goes uh, when it comes to uh, uh, podcasting in Apple. Uh, Warren, what do you think? Um, yeah, I, my wife and I really liked the first season of the show. Um, we're excited for next to, to start. Um, you know, podcast about it doesn't sound like something I'd be interested in. Um, I'm kind of like, uh, Chuck, uh, yeah. some of the podcasts are better about some older things. There, there's one that I'm listening to called, uh, Zach to the future, which is, uh, <laughs> it's about, uh, it's, a uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, the guy from Save from the Belt. Say by the bell mm-hmm. yeah. a, a show with somebody else and they talk to other child actors and it's really kind of cool um and then um you know uh, the, it, you're gonna listen to this podcast because of the space and the 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 not the, not because it's a show because you're interested in space is basically why you're gonna listen to this podcast i think um the show itself you know we were talking about it before it's good but you know it's it is boring at parts i mean I certainly it. in the middle yeah. in the big i found the beginning uh the beginning series good and the, the end series of the end of the series pretty good right in the middle kind of like okay you know it's kind of the same thing over and over again um but um i imagine the podcast is going to be a little bit more about you know actual uh, no, actual space yeah so, unlike, I, I, I hope, yeah, I hope so. I mean, the, the, I, I, I know exactly what you mean, Warren. I, I've thoroughly enjoyed the first season. Um, there was a little too much social messaging in it for me. It's like, you know, could we please get on with the point of the show? And, and somebody's going to send me nasty emails for that. <laughs> no, but, but I, you're right. I totally saw, I mean, I felt the same way. It's like, you know, it's, you know, Tim Cook was, you could see Apple was pushing the, the PC all over the place and you know, it's fine. And that's what they do, yeah. but it was a little bit, a lot. <laughs> and I, and I might challenge you on that. I don't know if it was Tim Cook and Apple, you know, I think that they just, as they were trying to rewrite the, I mean, cause folks, if you don't know, this is an alt history um, kind of, a kind of show. And so I felt like they were trying to rewrite the history of the, you know, the early space program based on the values of today and okay, so yeah, that that was entirely possible, and it's an alt history thing. So 
doesn't mean it has to be deadly accurate or even in sync with what's happening now, but it just it seemed to slow the story down to 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 specifically push some of those points. And it's like, yeah, okay, that's not what we're here for. So, you know, hopefully season two will have a little bit better pacing. Yeah. Um, and then uh, next story I had is uh, Apple Music Replay 21 2021 playlist is now available. Apple Music subscribers can now listen to their Replay 2021 playlist as of uh, uh, as of this week. Um, the playlist ranks all the music you had been listening to on Apple Music from 1 to 100 with your most streamed songs ranked at the top of the list. Um, and then they have replay lists, of course, from past years as well. Only thing I was kind of disappointed about was the fact that, uh, well, I, you know, I share my Apple Music ac- account with family, so they're going to be playing the music. So then I'm also going to see the music they listen to. So I s- tend to saw a lot of Christmas music that was in the charts on, on my playlist, which is which is kind of. Uh, like okay, I mean, I, yeah, I listen Christmas. I'm listening to Christmas music one month out of the year, and, and you're putting that as my, my my replay of the whole year. So, um, I don't know, if, Chuck, if you've looked at these playlists and uh, for you in Apple Music, what do you think? No, I I have to say I have to step out on this one because I tend to cre- create my own playlists yeah. or decide what I want to listen to. I I seldom use any of the curated playlists. I, uh, so this is just not for me. Yeah, and I'm and I'm actually impressed of of the curators that they have with Apple that are doing a lot of this work. So I mean, I I tend to look at some of the other playlists that are you know, for the different genres and such. Uh, but uh, no, yeah, I, I have my own playlist too. I agree with you. I I build those as well. So Warren, have you ever did you look at this playlist at all? Uh, um, this year and last year is pretty much the years of the podcast for me. I have been neglecting my Apple Music subscription as well, almost as much as my uh, fitness subscri- uh, subscription. Um, so I, you know, I, I, it probably doesn't even have anything there. I don't think I've listened to much this year okay. or last year. And then uh, next, another story here, CBS All Access Ad Awareness Campaign is reminding Apple TV owners about the rebranding to Paramount Plus uh, coming up. Uh, this will be on March 4th. Uh, they have start reminding subscribers all access streaming service on Apple TV that's rebranding, uh, which is uh, CBS All Access, which is actually in, available as an individual Apple TV channel subscription, it appears to have rolled out of uh, its ad awareness campaign on the streaming service in the last day or two. And... Uh, I think what's going to end up happening, I think you're, you're, you're going to have to have, uh, it's not going to bundle with Apple TV's app because a lot of streaming services were doing that. Um, uh, so the reason I brought that up is I think I wonder, I'm wondering to see if a lot of these, uh, content providers are going to kind of step away from, um, uh, step away from being bundled into the Apple TV app. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, with, uh, the the fourth gen and the 4K model of the Apple TV, uh, you know, you'll be able to stream this. You'll be able to download the app. Third generation TV Apple TV users probably going to need to hold off because uh, uh, upgrading as well as uh, they'll probably have to AirPlay it because a lot of apps aren't going to be available anymore. Warren, did you uh, think about the this? And the reason I brought this up is just more of the content uh, in Apple TV. Um, I mean, it's not going to be something I'm going to subscribe to, I don't think, until I find something to do uh, that, yeah. that, that will lead me to it. Um, but uh, not much to think about it. Bad awareness is good. Yeah. Go for it. And talk- uh, I mean, the only, th- the only thing I could tell you is uh, from what I heard on somebody else say is CBS, uh, the CBS streaming service is actually one of the first services that came out, um, you know, ever. And, you know, now people think it's a new thing, but it's, as you said, it's just a rebranded. Uh, yeah. name for it. And Chuck, I mean, you, you, I, I'm assuming you, you're keeping this, your CBS All Access cause, just because of Star Trek Discovery, I think, was probably the biggest reason. But um, Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, again, I, I think Warren hit it. I mean, this is this is uh, a rebranding. And so you have to make sure right. you don't lose people in the, right. in the process. So you sort of have to beat them over the head and remind them. Um, from what I've, the little bit I've read about this, though, I, I think it sounds like the, the content is going to be a bit more expanded. Yeah. They're going to gather up a little more content. So that's always a good thing. It's it's not only an opportunity to promote some of that, but also to remind people that this is this is what is here that you've liked before. Here's some new stuff. Pay attention to us, please. Yeah. And they were enticing people now, being, uh, you should subscribe because they offered a, a 50% off for a full year 
uh, of subscription for CBS All Access, which of course will carry over once the, they rebrand. So I decided to jump on that because I thought that was a pretty reasonable, uh, uh, pretty reasonable price. You know, it's normally a hundred dollars for commercial free for a full full year subscription. Now I'm going to get that for half the price. So, um, so they're they're enticing people, but uh, good to see the content continues to evolve on Apple TV, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes here. Uh, and a couple more stories here. Uh, Bridge, which is a B-R-Y-D-G, which is on, this is a 9 to 5 Mac, unveiled a multi-touch, su- unveils multi-touch support for its iPad Pro Plus keyboard. And plus it now has a new 10.2 inch iPad case. Uh, the popular iPad accessory maker Bridge is returning to public life today with a series of announcements. The company introduced a multi-touch trackpad support for the Pro Plus keyboards, as well as a, an all new Max Plus keyboard and track pad combo case featuring OtterBox protection for the eighth generation uh, iPad. Uh, Bridge uh, had some struggles with the way their keyboards were working. Uh, so they, they, they've been releasing a lot of new firmware, but it looks like the multi-touch support is going to be a, a big, uh, a nice big addition for all the iPad series. Uh, Chuck, and I know you and I both have interviewed these folks at CES in the past. Uh, what did you think of this? Uh you know, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, they were having some problems that probably wasn't anticipated. Yeah. The fact that they're going to just beat on it until they get it right. I've got a bridge keyboard for my iPad mini, um, and I, I love it. it. I mean, I've said this plenty of times. It took that machine from a strictly consumption device and turned it into a productivity device. Yep. Um, and if, if and when I get a new iPad, um, because that's kind of what I'm waiting on right now, you know, I will be taking a good hard look at the bridge options because I just think they are they are quality products, no question about it. Absolutely. Any thoughts, Warren? Yeah, no, I've been I've been admiring them for a while, and I've you know been, I've never owned one, but I've been close to getting one. I was definitely going to jump on the the one for the eleven inch with the trackpad until you know the the reviews came out and they said it wasn't quite there. I know guy guy bought one. I, yeah. He likes it. He has his, he has the one they're talking about. So he'll be excited with that firmware update. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, one, once the Magic uh, Keyboard came out, I, I, you know, I decided I'd go that route. But I certainly, if if the Bridge Keyboard worked as well as the Apple's version, I would have went with the Bridge. I, I like the feel of it. I like the look of it. Yeah. I, I've seen them. You know, yep. I just think it's what Chuck says. It really makes it into more of a laptop than the the uh, Apple solution to this. Yep. And last story we have this week, uh, LastPass, which I'm password manager, uh, will restrict LastPass. free users to only one type of device starting next month. Uh, one of the most attractive features of the popular password manager, LastPass, is that if you choose to, to use pretty much effectively without paying a dime. Well, I guess that's coming to an end uh, in March. This LastPass has just announced the free tier will be restricted to just one solo device. And I hear Warren, him and on because you just went to LastPass. What do you think? Yes, so I, I got things to say. First of all, it's it's from what I understand, it's not to one device; it's to one type of device. Mm. So you could put it on multiple iPhones and iOS devices, or you could put it on multiple computers. Um, it's, so it's that it's not just to one. Um, I did just switch uh, about two months ago. I decided to pick one. I picked that one despite uh, my wife and my son hating me for doing it because I have to, now now we have shared passwords and they can't log into Amazon (laughs) and they can't log into my Hotmail to get uh, my son's Xbox things are happening with that. But um, I finally got it straightened out and I ended up paying, you know, right away anyways for the family uh, because I need the family uh, uh, subscription. I don't know how much I'm paying, but it's not a lot. Um, Yes, it starts at $3 a month. Yeah, we don't even really notice the charge. Um, and, and, you know, for the most part, it, it works, and we like it. I'm sure the one you use is good, too. The uh, One password. Uh, one password. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I hear good things about that one, too. Um, you know, what what happened, what actually happened right after the last pass, and after I converted everything over, uh, <laughs> Apple released uh, iCloud for Windows with the Chrome extension that, could get your uh, Apple uh, uh, your keychain passwords onto Chrome, which is mainly the main reason why I needed to go to LastPass because my wife is still on Windows; she won't put Mac, <laughs> and I couldn't I couldn't do that. 
looking back, if I would have known this was going to happen, I probably could have got away with, because she has an iPhone and iPad, and my son has a Mac and iPad and iPhone. Probably could have got away with uh, going to iCloud keychains for everybody uh, <laughs> using that extension, but the damage is done. And don't know what goes yeah. now, so. Now, Chuck, uh, like me, are you a 1Password user? I, I don't know what you think of this. Yeah, I'm a 1Password user. Um, this, for, for In some perverse way, this was my favorite story of the week. Um, <laughs> because if, if there's so many different angles to this. Um, first of all, I, I firmly believe in paying for what you get. And especially when it comes to critical utilities. And a password utility is really, really critical. Mm -hmm. Um I thought this was an interesting business move. Warren just said a couple things that, that just confirmed some of my feelings. The first one is that it's $3 a month, give or take. So he, he doesn't even notice it. So why well, wouldn't last pass, you know, if there, there will be a few people that notice it, but at three bucks a month, they, they may not. So they'll just keep going. The idea that, okay, they, they have an existing user base and it's it's a hassle to change password managers. Yes. There's no two ways about it. So I can go to another option where I'm probably going to have to pay, and we can debate later whether it's a better option or not as good an option. But I, I'm going to have to pay to go to that other option. And you know, by the way, it's going to be quite a bit of pain. So why wouldn't LastPass do this? And and I don't think that it's a money grab at any or anything. I think it's a very reasonable business business approach to it. But I think it also, you know, gives you an idea that if if you are using free things, you are you are creating your own your own resistance to move. Um, and you know, there's a resistance to move anyway. But just the idea that now, Warren, you know, Warren has the keyboard commands built into his hands right now. You know, and that's just sort of the nature of it. And yeah. so, I, I I applaud LastPass for it. It's not my choice, but I applaud them. I think it's I think it's a good business move. It'll be interesting to see how much backlash they get um, from the from the folks out there that think that everything should be free unconditionally. Yep, absolutely. All right, so that's that's the news of this week. Let's move on to beta, beta iOS, uh, tvOS, watchOS. All is it was released this past week uh, on iOS and iPadOS. We're at fourteen point five beta two. Um, uh, Warren, what have you noticed uh, any differences uh, with, between beta one and beta two? Nope, nothing. Yeah, it seems nothing. pretty close. The one thing that did catch my eye was the fact that now music subscribers can now share lyrics and song clips in iOS uh, fourteen point five beta two. I haven't tried that or figured that out. But yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. And then the other thing was the iPad. Uh, you have it in the notes, but the iPad will mute uh, or mute the microphone when you have yes. it. Yes, I had that. Closed. I thought I had that in notes. I must have missed that one. Yeah. No, you did. It's in there somewhere. I but, thought I did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, I'd be, I, I only mention it now because I think those are literally the only two changes uh, in this beta um, for for iOS in general, uh, iOS and iPad OS. Yes, I do have that. Uh, beta 2 is going to uh, mute the built-in microphone when it, the, the smart folio is closed. And then um, yep. uh, other things that there were, you know, little cosmetic things, because I love what these people just uh, look at stuff. Of course, emoji characters, you know, it's important to have new emojis, right? Uh, I think they said 217 to be exact. <laughs> Uh, Apple did re yeah, some, uh, to remove the bl uh, the blood uh, from the syringe emoji to give it more new a neutral. I mean, they, uh, this is crazy stuff. You know, the headphones now look like AirPods Max. <laughs> you know, there's a there's a there's a guy with a smoke coming, uh, a face with smoke coming out, yeah. or and there's one where the head is in the clouds. Um, you yeah, know, there's a few funny ones in there, but. But uh, this is a uh, public beta. I know. I know, uh, Chuck. Because this is not much of your thing. You don't like you avoid betas for the most part, right? <laughs> I, I avoid betas, and I I have to. I can't help it, David. I I get a little bit frustrated with the Mac press. Uh, some friends of ours and mm -hmm. some people I don't know who constantly push the ideas that this is in the new beta. It's no guarantee that it's going to be in the fourteen point five release. Right. And so I feel that some of these. No, scratch that. I feel like a lot of these articles are clickbait. Um, you know, cover it, put put make make notes on it, and you know, then when it releases, barrages with all this stuff. Right. Um, but the trouble is that as soon as one starts to cover what's coming in the betas, then they all have to, or they feel like they're not getting their fair set of clicks. So I I don't know I don't know who you punish for this, but 
I, I mean, I think it's borderline irresponsible because it feels like it's encouraging people to download and use the betas. Right. And that is just not a good idea if you depend on your device. No, I, I stress that, that, but I know, I know, Warren, you but, don't. But I mean, because you you live in beta, so. But that did change. That, I think Apple changed the rules a little bit when the public beta program came out, because you know before the public beta, you know, in theory, developers weren't even allowed to share, it, and they always did, right? They, they were under the agreement that they shouldn't share any of the uh, new features. Uh, but now that the public beta is out and anybody can do it, then. Apple's going to know that people are going to talk about it. And, you know, just on you know, what you were saying, like, it, it was on the national news or the evening news about the face unlock with the, lock, with the watch and mask. Right. So, you know, if Apple doesn't come out with that in, in, you know, public release, people might be angry about that at that point because it's, it's out. Yeah, um, that one I know, think is going to be there. <laughs> I think so, too. If, like, Apple pulls it from, from you know, from it, from beta, then people will complain um, because I think a lot of people are excited about it. But you're right. I mean, if they don't, you know, if it doesn't make it into the, the final release, you know, Apple could say, listen, we put it there as a beta. didn't work out. There, there was issues with it. It's not there. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it's I, not uh, it's not the same category as as rumors, but it it's it's that whole setting of potentially unrealistic expectations. It just makes me crazy because I just, I don't think it's fair to Apple and Warren, you bring up a fair point, you know, that Apple did sort of change some of the rules about the public betas, but so many, so much of the, of the public and not, not, not even talking the non techie public, but so much of the public doesn't understand what beta means and the idea that, you know, hopefully it's a stable beta and it's good, but it also can crash applications. It can cause data loss. Uh, you know, I think there have been a couple of cases in the past where it's bricked phones. So, you know, please, folks, don't install betas. Yeah, please. You just, the, the buyer beware. I keep saying that, but it's fine. The Warren just will always say it. it's fine. I, that's, I always <laughs> tease him every, I tease him every week, Chuck. It's just, he just, he, a he's a glutton for punishment. He's a glutton for punishment. Apple will, re- will replace your watch. They've done it once for me when I bricked it with the beta. It's all good. Just you love you I love don't want to go through the hassle. Yeah, and you call you love yeah. the playing. You love the playing. Yeah. Um, oh, so okay. uh, that's beta for this week. Um, interesting. I found this uh, this um, music player. I wasn't aware of this. It was uh, called Doppler Music Player. It's uh, they did get an update this week, which I didn't even know it existed. Honestly, uh, notably, uh, it does a uh, track and album features and. Uh, uh, a very popular third-party music app uh, for the iPhone. Um, What it is, it uses an alternative way to experience the the music library uh, sporting an adaptive minimalist interface with an emphasis on artwork and metadata and editing on the iPhone and support for all the different, all the the common formats uh, without having to connect to a computer. Um, So I I have not tried this yet, but I put this in in the show notes. So I wanted people to check this out. Um, Chuck, I don't know if you're like the one who likes to look at other third-party apps that that would camp on to Apple Music. I got another app I'm going to talk about here just a little bit here as well. Um, I, were you familiar with this? Because I wasn't until I put this in here. I've heard the name. Um, I you know what caught my attention is if it's gaining Siri support uh, yeah. and CarPlay. And CarPlay, I, right? Spot, spotlight integration wasn't as, as important. You know, I put it on my list too of things I want to check out. Yeah. Um, this is one of those. This is one of those times where, okay, it's going to have a new experience and all that stuff, and that sounds great. But um, I, I want to see if it solves any problems for me because right now I feel like the Apple Music app, along with the S Lady, um, does pretty much everything I needed to do or wanted to do at the moment. And if somebody can point out something that I, it's not doing that would intrigue me, then yeah, I'll go. Otherwise, it'll be something to experiment with. But I. I'm hard pressed to see myself changing. Yeah, it'd be tough. And uh, and also, this app is not free. It's six ninety nine. Um, so you you got a little bit of the expense there. Uh, but uh, and it's got it actually has uh, almost five stars in the in the app store. So it's, uh, something worth to check out. But we have a link in the show notes. Uh, there was an article in Mac Rumors about it, so I wanted to to bring that up. Um, and then um, uh, let's uh, let's go on and move on to a listener question. A uh, uh, listener sent an email. Uh, if you uh, send an email to us at feedback at intouchwithios.com. Listener Dan asks, where do you find the IMEI and serial number on your iPhone? Well, 
the way you do that is you go into general and you go under about, and then the iPhone serial number will be listed there at, at the top. And then if you scroll down towards the bottom of the, uh, about, towards the bottom, you'll see the EID, which is the electronic SIM, and then the IMEI, which is uh, the identifier for the physical SIM. If you scroll down even further, you'll also see under primary, that would be the primary, uh, your primary line that's uh, connected to your iPhone. In my case, it's T-Mobile. Um, it, it lists all that information all in one place. So you can get, you know, get a, 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 a good place to find everything there is to know about uh, your identification for your cellular service. Now I'm using the eSIM. I know, do you guys, are you guys using eSIM or are you still on your physical SIMs? Uh, uh, Cause I'm, I, I, you're, I haven't switched over. Right now I'm on physical, but I'm, I want to go to eSIM. Yeah. So yeah. I've, I've done it. And then I, each time I've upgraded my phone, I've had to go call the carrier. I didn't want to take the chance of my line being uh, dead for the moment. So you call them up, get it switched over. And it's really nice because then now that opens up your second, your slot, your physical SIM. So if you want to put a second line on your, on your iPhone, you can do that. So, uh, so that's the, uh, that's the eSIM. So I hope, uh, I hope that answered your question, Dan, and thanks for listening. We appreciate it. And uh, next, uh, uh, next, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Apple actually released their updated security gu- uh, guide um, this uh, this this week. Uh, article is in at Mac Rumors, um, and there's an updated version of the platform security guide, which p- provides a, a comprehensive overview of the latest security advancements across all of the OSs. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, what they've done is they've actually provided uh, uh, there's a guide in there about the password monitoring feature in iOS 14 and in Mac OS Big Sur, which automatically keeps an eye out uh, for any saved passwords that might be involved in a data breach. Now, of course, we just talked about password managers. One password does a wonderful job doing that because you go into one password and the watchtower will tell you, OK, uh, your password is uh, is uh, is in a data breach or it's you've been using it too many times. There's too many uh, uh, repeated passwords. So you, uh, th- that does it, too. But. It's great to see Apple's looking out for everybody when it comes to uh, the security in, in this as well. So um, they've added some new sections in here related to a lot of the Mac stuff uh, in there. Um, and we'll have a link in the show notes to, to the security guide. Uh, but it's good to know that Apple is, is watching our is watching our back and keeping things uh, really secure. Um, Chuck, what do you think? I, mean, I think security is, has, has been a paramount uh, thing with Apple and with all their devices. Yeah, I mean, and it's been interesting to watch. The, the focus on privacy, security, safety, you know, the, those things are all so, sort of all under the same umbrella, I think. And Apple seems to, you know, be making a lot of hay with this, but also rightfully so if, if those kind of things are important to you. If you really don't care, then yeah. then that's fine. You can ignore it, and it doesn't cost you anything to ignore it. But if you care about it, it may be something that you are – willing to pay for uh, to get into the Apple ecosystem. So I, I feel like it's a, it's a win-win win for us, win for Apple, um, win for everybody across the board. Yeah. And Warren, like you, like me, you both, you and I are both work in IT support. So we, we keep on, on top of security issues as well. And uh, I think this is definitely something good in, in the world of Apple. I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to read all those guides tonight. I thought you, it's, it's going to be light reading, so I figured do it. Yeah. That's sure. why it's better to, to review the article I just shared from Mac Rumors, but I did also include the link to the to the actual guide. Oh. Uh, that's, actually, this oh, yeah, time yeah. it's a web it's a web guide because usually it's a PDF that you have to really have to start uh, like eyes glazing over to reading through some of this stuff. Uh, oh, it's the Apple had to pay that guy sitting in the corner. For doing something, I mean, there's you know, there's one guy in the security team that's like, hey, you, you never do anything. You're writing PDFs to that. Yeah, exciting stuff. So, good, good awareness, here. So, um, all right. So as we uh, come, come. Uh, as we come to home stretch here, I wanted to talk, give, uh, talk a few uh, tips uh, that I have out here. One of the tips, and I was I, I completely forgot about this, is the fact that uh, mirrored selfies. You you actually could. Um, uh, you could set your front facing camera uh, by default and by default it's it's actually in a reversed image the text will of course appear backwards but things you do on the right happen on the right side of the screen and this is more intuitive for setting up a shot but it looks weird so uh, actually uh, when you take the actual photo uh, it, it's it, it, you take it and it's not mirrored um so it's taking like you if you were standing where the phone is and looking uh, at your subject usually yourself and the text is not reversed but if you want to capture what you actually see on the screen and backward text and all you can do that now so what you do is you go into into the settings and go under camera and then you go in and uh, uh, turn on mirrored mirror front camera 
and then because by default that's turned off and if you want that to be turned on uh it uh, will help you with your front facing uh photos and i don't take a lot of selfies but sometimes here and there chuck and i i'm sure you don't take a lot of selfies right <laughs> no i have to look in the mirror every morning that's enough <laughs> yes. yeah so good good, good tip a good a good setting because the people are are using this so i think it's a good a good idea so so uh, I'm playing along and I don't, I don't see, I, I see you turn on set, that setting on. So I have a mirror front camera setting on. Mm-hmm. Then what do you do from there to get to, you open the camera app, I guess. Yeah. The camera app and, and go to the front facing camera. Um, and right. Uh, yeah, you, you can do it when you just open it, it toggles that uh, into that mode uh, is basically what happens. Uh, you, the, the, oh. the text will still be reversed, but it's not an opposite. Uh, you're not on opposite sides. It's really for mirroring. If it, I mean, it, it, that, that's where it, where it, uh, where it comes into play. So I'll take your word on it. Okay. Uh, uh, second tip here is I wanted to talk about uh, uh, keeping your Wi-Fi address uh, private. Um, you uh, can now join a Wi-Fi network with a private address. That means that when you uh, when your device's network address won't be visible to networks or any network operators or other network observers, you can keep said parties from tracking you and creating a user profile on you. This comes in handy definitely when uh, if you connect to uh, like a place like a, a public Wi-Fi, like at Starbucks or something. So to to do this, you go into settings and then to Wi-Fi, and then under that you will see a toggle for the private address and uh, turn that on and then. And and it'll reduce the uh, the, the potential of anybody tracking you um, when you uh, uh, when your iPhone is across different Wi-Fi networks. It protects you. You guys have that turned on? No, not so far. But I'm about to. All right, that's a good tip then. <laughs> uh, so check that out. Um, and then uh, one other tip I want to do, and actually I did this. Uh, actually, I was using this yesterday, and and um, uh, and uh, Chuck, I know you highlighted this article in uh, on your Flipboard uh, page for Mac Mac Voices. Uh, uh, the camera control uh, for iPhone or with Apple Watch. I had to take a picture of myself because, and I didn't have anybody to do it. So I what I did was I took my stand behind me here, and I t- took my picture. But the cool thing is, you pull your Apple Watch out, and of course the Apple Watch has your has the camera app on it. And so when you go in and uh, launch the camera app on the uh, on the watch, it's basically a remote control. So you can select the camera, whether it be front facing or rear facing, and you can flip it right from the watch. Um, you can adjust the flash, gives you access, access there. You can turn on live photos. You can change it if you want to have HDR or the high dynamic range uh, on or off. Uh, and then you capture the photo. You can actually zoom it if you want, and it's got the trigger. So if you want to take the picture uh, right from uh, the, the camera app, as well as uh, it, what it does is it does have the timer, and that's what I use. It, it does the, the three second timer, but it does what it does is it takes the picture in burst mode. So when you take that picture, then you'll have the ten burst shots. So make sure you get the the best shot available, especially when you're doing it you know, remotely. So have you guys used that? I I, I use it once in a while, but. I did for um, our Christmas Christmas cards this year. We did it. Yeah, um, yeah, it comes in really handy. We uh, we actually bought a, a cheap tripod on Amazon. Um, put the phone in there, yep. and you know, my wife's how we how we gonna do this? How we gonna do this? Like, like she even has to ask that question. She knows you're gonna pull a rabbit out of your hat, right? Well, <laughs> she, she's like, well, first we gotta invite the neighbor over so you know, so he could you know take the picture. I'm like, we don't have to do any of that. Kind of got a nice little tripod here. <laughs> yeah, never use that thing again, but it's there. <laughs> well, I use this one here that I use for my for my webcam, so it it works out really well. So, mm-hmm. all right, and then uh, I want. Do you have anything else to say, Chuck? Well, no, that just that is that is a great tip. It's one of those things that you forget about it yeah. if you don't use it. But then when you remember it, it's like, oh yeah, this is great, yeah. you know, because I don't have, I can sit my phone somewhere, you know, and, and just, I mean, put it on a shelf somewhere, walk out of the room and then take pictures when nobody's looking. Yeah. We, we, so, we had, we, no, you and I both had no. the same idea because I, I had actually did it and then I saw you posted an article about it. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, not that I would ever do anything like that, but you know, it's kind of a nice option to have if you, uh, if, if you need it creatively. Absolutely. 
<laughs> All right. And then I have two apps I wanted to talk about this week. Uh, the first app here is called TV Forecast. And what this app does is it tracks, explores, and, and gives, allows you to discover your favorite TV shows, um, see what's up next, mark your progress, and much more. And you can check things off. Um, you can see what up, what's up next at, at a glance. Uh, you receive notifications when an episode's about to air. If you're falling behind, you can mark your progress and track it. Um, so it's got a lot of great stuff. It works for both the iPhone and the iPad. Um, and you can sync your uh, progress uh, as well. And uh, uh, it, it is uh, free with in-app purchase. So it does have a... Uh, uh, a premium, uh, a premium fee starting at 99 cents, but you can go all the way up to a lifetime subscription for 24 99. The free version gives you, uh, up to five shows you can track at once. So you can try it out, see if it's something that you like. Um, but I thought it was pretty cool. I, I, I started using it a, a, a little bit and, um, uh, I, I like how it's got a very robust, uh, uh, interface and being able to see, uh, all the, all the episodes. Like, uh, I like watching this, sh- uh, the Chicago, uh, shows that are on NBC, uh, the Chicago fire, Chicago med, Chicago PD. And you go in there and it actually shows all the, all, all the seasons that are, that have come out and, and it tells you more details about the, about the, the show and the cast and it's all in one place. So it's a really cool app. TV forecast and uh, check it out. I don't, I, I, at least you could try it out. It won't cost you anything to, to try it, but if you like it, you know, subscribe, sub, sub, support the developer. I think I, guys, any, uh, any comments on that? No, there are a couple, I've, I've seen a couple of these. I have not seen this one. Um, yeah. You know, it, I blow hot and cold as far as you know yeah. what I'm trying to follow. But uh, the more the more shows that jump around on networks and you don't know yeah. when they're coming back, especially due to pandemic. Yeah, I can see a use case for this, and you may have just sold a copy for the developer. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, actually, I was thinking of a show you recommended last week on the Mac show is uh, Resident Alien. I went and watched it. Oh my god, that is that is a funny show <laughs> <laughs> on the Sci Fi Network. Uh, it's uh, definitely dark, but interesting uh show i i watched the first episode and uh it's uh it's on the sci-fi network resident alien if you want to check it out um did, did you did you catch up you watch all the all the episodes already i know i've still got i've, I've got one in my queue right now but yeah, yeah it's it's a it, it's been one of the high high points i know everybody talks about ted lasso being one of the high points of the pandemic yeah. uh, resident alien is for me because yeah. it's just i i my sense of humor apparently is a lot more twisted than most no, people. No, you got me. You got me at it because I uh, it was it was it was going slow at first, but it got a little dark. But uh, but mm. as the as the first episode progressed, I, I started liking it. So, um, all right. And then the last app mm. I had here is uh, an app called uh, Soar. S O O R. It's a mu- it's a music player and similar to what we just talked about in a little while ago uh, uh, about music players. And what this is this is a uh, beautiful premium music player for your iPhone. Features third-party uh, uh, rich uh, enhancements for the Apple Music app. Uh, it's got curated content personal, personalized for your listening style. Uh, it's got a number of um, integrations uh, and widgets and uh, release alerts. And it uh, again, the Music app is required in order for you to use this app. Uh, and it only works with Apple Music or songs that you have uploaded at to the Music app. No other service is supported at this time with it. So... That was an interesting app, but uh, uh, but uh, check it out. Uh, I, it, it is not free. It's four ninety nine. Uh, again, pretty decent interface. I, I don't. I think it's a bad uh, bad app to check out and uh, see uh, what it what it does for you. So, all right. Then, and uh, with that, I don't think we have anything else. Unless you guys have anything else that you that uh, you you could think of with uh, apps, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, that is a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, just like Dan did at feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. You can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others, but better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where you can find all the links to all the ways to listen to us there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And Chuck, thanks so much for coming back onto the show. We really enjoy having you on. And uh, where can everybody find you? It's always a pleasure, David. Thank you for having me. 
Um, you can find me at macvoices.com. That's where I do uh, everything. We have Mac Voices Live uh, on YouTube and Facebook on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. David shows up pretty regularly. Warren does when he has nothing else to do. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> Pri- private joke, folks. You got to understand. And uh, you can find me. Yeah. <laughs> and you can find me on the socials as at Chuck Joyner. Thanks again. Yeah. Dave. Thanks, Chuck. And yes, I would definitely highly recommend come come watch us on uh, Mac Voices Live every Tuesday night. It's a lot of uh, fun. It's a blast, and so you're getting a really good following up on the YouTube uh, channel, which is great. Okay to see. So, and when Warren uh, decides to come on, and when he's not busy, you know, we would love to have him there. But. Uh, What's been going on at Mac know. to the Future? Think, Anything exciting? And what's been going on with you? I think I scared everybody away last time I was on there. Um, no, uh, same stuff. I usually use this time to thank uh, the, the guests for coming. So thanks, Chuck. Uh, it's always yes. fun. And I always learn something. So it's good to, good to see you. It's good to see you again. Yes. Good to see you. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll talk again soon.